What's up, everybody? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome to another episode of Sailing Sea Wind. This January marks one year of us making a video every week for you all. And we are so proud of ourselves and we hope you've enjoyed the whole ride so far. And since it's been a year, um, as a data-driven person, I was looking at the channel's analytics and we've seen a pretty significant jump in subscribers, um, but we were looking at our viewers in particular and we found that over 50% of the viewers are not subscribed to our channel. Speaking of that subscriber count, we just hit 2,000 subscribers. If you are one of those people who haven't subscribed, we would really appreciate it if you did. Um, it means the world to us and it really makes a difference for our channel getting out there. Um, so yeah. So with that being said, before you jump into the episode, please just take a minute, click subscribe, click the notification bell, um, and enjoy the next episode. Yeah, enjoy. We splashed this week, so yeah. all right. Cheers. Good morning, everybody. It is splash day. It's about 7.30 in the morning. And we have a very short list, including coffee, before we go into the water. There she is. I'm very excited. We slept well. Got the exhaust done. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Did you make the coffee? Yeah, it's so uh, sleepy. Are you excited? Mm-hmm. Did you sleep well? Yeah. Well, here we go. This is the last seacock. Uh, this is the raw water strainer right down there. You've seen me mess around with this in other videos. Here's the engine. This is the engine intake. And then I also have a tree here of bronze fittings. This is the uh, takeoff for the, this is the water maker and everything. So yeah, this is kind of a, another under sink utility room. So yeah, we're gonna get to taking this thing apart. This is a smaller seat box than the other two. That's a wrap. Okay, if any of you remember this, this is what we had to fix while we were in the water a couple times. This little pinwheel here gets stuck. This is what tells us how fast our boat is moving through the water. I learned a little trick out in Seattle when we went out and saw Andrew's boat for the first time that they use silicone on these little pinwheels. And so I'm going to try that and then I'll install this thing and that'll be another thing off the list. All right, I got some business to take care of. This thing has been a pain in my butt for quite a while now. This is the old exhaust. I'm gonna take much pleasure in throwing this thing away. So let's go do it. So much happiness, huh? So much. Uh, I've had troubles with that exhaust for a long time. I'm glad to get rid of it. Huh? And then a whole new marine riser? Yeah, yeah. 
What's yours made out of? Uh, fiberglass. Fiberglass? Yeah. I have a stainless one that's been there forever and I had to rebuild it in Lutra last year. But uh -huh. I was thinking of replacing it, but it seems like the angle in and angle out and everything is so mm -hmm. unique to it that I, know. I, I abandoned the thought. I had to, I had to build a shelf you know, because you have the curvature of the hull in there. Yeah. And I was lucky I only had one little spot that I could sneak it in. And uh -huh. so it took a few days of doing, but I was able to get the shelf built. And then after that, it was pretty good. Huh. So, What's your boat? A sea wind over here. Funny, I was having exhaust issues uh, uh, with that, that system. Probably the same time you were rebuilding yours in Eleuthera. Yeah. I was in Staniel Key. Oh, and Daniel Key. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is us here. Yeah, gorgeous little thing. Thank you. And that's a glass boat? Yeah, yeah, glass boat. Yep. 1978 it was built. Really? Yep. Well, yeah. do you have any grief or on anything that I can help you on? I'm just an extra okay. over. Okay. Uh, on Arctic Bear. All right, well, this battery is about to die. Nice guy. Um, I'm gonna take the bronze wool out of these through hulls that I put in, if you remember from the video that we were doing that. And it's just gonna go something like this. Ta -da. And that's all. I'm not gonna walk around the boat with you. But anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do. That's one of the last things to do on the list. And then we are going to, oh, and that, I have one more thing. I want to check our cutlass bearing just because everyone says that you should check it for movement. So I'm going to do that. So the cutlass bearing is in here. It's basically a bronze tube with some rubber in it. And there's channels in the rubber that allow water to go in to cool the bearing. So all I've heard is that you just, you just rock the thing. Okay, so there's a little bit of movement there, but everyone says about a millimeter of movement is okay. So I'm gonna take that as, all right, that's good to know. I'm gonna scrape this zinc up. So there's a lot of life left on it, but like you have to clean it or it won't work. You have to like etch the surface up. So that's what I'm gonna do next. There's that stout rig of ours. Chain plates looking good. So what I'm doing is just getting as good a look and feel for the condition of everything under the waterline as I can before we splash. As per usual, knock on wood, everything here looks just perfect. When I bought the boat, the first thing I did, the first big project was I stripped the all the old bottom paint off and put a barrier coat on it uh it's a an, an epoxy barrier coat and then i uh put the bottom paint on and it has been okay ever since other than that weird little thing that was in the in the head that is now fixed and there's no evidence of anything on the outside no delamination it always feels very solid over there where that area is so Sea wind has a really wide keel on the bottom. And uh, so if you ever had the beacher or have her stand up on her own with a stilt, then she can do that. It looks like the rudder is in really good shape. Cutlass bearing is within uh, tolerance. Yeah, I think we're good. The biggest issue we had with storing here was we're on dirt here. And so you can kind of see that block of wood down there has sunk a little tiny bit from rain and stuff over the summer. 
And so when we came back, the stands largely stay the same. They have a huge footprint there on the, on the plywood. And the stands were actually pushing up in the hull a little bit. Thankfully, we had no damage. But some of the cabinetry inside the boat is, is a little wonky right now. So I'm hoping that the whole boat just kind of takes a big sigh of relief and resumes the normal position of everything. One little spot here. Only on this one side, there's a little bit of an area that popped for some reason. There's a little bit of delamination here. But I think as a whole, the rudder is fine. And when I uh, lift up I mean, there is no play in either the, the lower rudder bearing in the shoe or up here. So I'm confident that our rudder is in good shape too. Yeah. All right, I think I'm done. Boy, is it hot. Let me get down here. Oh man, it gets hot early. So, I like everything that I see. I think we're ready to go in the water. I'm excited. I'm hungry. I'm gonna go eat something. I'm sure Katie's hungry too. She's on a phone call right now for work. So, all right, we'll see you guys in the water. The monster has approached. Here we go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. He's going in. There's Nino. Miss you guys, Zach and Corey. Tight, but it's still workable and it's not leaking now. So hopefully it yeah. stays like that. Okay. So, but we're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're in. That forward through haul, I think you probably heard me saying, was leaking a little bit, so I tightened it a bit more, and now it's not. I have a paper towel under it, under it, so. Uh, Fingers crossed that thing behaves. We'd have to just replace it or something. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, here we are. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. We're gonna try the engine. <laughs> so I have the GoPro recording to see if there's any water that comes out the exhaust. And I'm gonna have my phone recording in here and then Katie's gonna get me through the door here. Hopefully she starts. <laughs> yeah.
so it's it's more of a solid stream nice. um, which is kind of cool and I can't tell because this is all open right now but it seems like the exhaust note is pretty quiet yeah so I'm gonna close this it seems pretty quiet, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Woo! All right. Yeah, a little bit more. That's like 1600. It's quiet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Success. So. The last thing to do is I want to I want to watch because funny enough we have this vinyl tubing uh, that is clear temporarily on the exhaust. Um, we'll be able to watch the siphon break with that anti siphon valve. It should just drain the entire clear tube because it's letting air in at the top of that loop through that valve. So Katie's going to come out here and she's going to shut the engine off and I'm going to be watching it. All right, you ready, honey? Okay, any time. And it did. It let everything drain down. Cool. <laughs> wow. I designed a marine exhaust and the execution was beautiful too <laughs> wow i can't believe it we have a new exhaust Take a break and get a drink. Hoo wee! All right. Oh yeah. Thank you. All right, we're we're at the floating dock. This is where we will be until we leave. Cool, hun. Good job. How do you? How do you? Hey. All right. Love you. Love you. All right. Now, begin more work. <laughs> We're flushing our water system. We just got to the dock and our lot, we noticed our lines are a little bit, our water lines are a little bit discolored, um, but we don't know if it's on the inside or the outside. It might be just the outside. I can see some stuff in them too. There's, there's like some, some like growth inside them and everything. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway. And then there's one in the engine room that is like orange, like dark orange. Right, but it might be the, we don't know if it's outside or inside. Right. So, we're following cruiser forms, we're flushing our water system. So it's a quart of bleach to every 50 gallons. And so pretty much we fill up the tank, we put in the bleach, and then we pressurize the system. We don't open any of the valves, but we just pressurize the lines with the chlorinated water and we let it sit for um i think it said at least like three hours but no more than 24 hours and then we open up all the valves flush it out and then we have to fill up the tank with water again flush it through again and then you can always add if your lines still smell a little bit like um chlorine you can add a bit of vinegar um that's what the, I think I would have to read through the thing again. I don't want people being like, you can't mix those two components. Don't worry. We'll double check what the instructions say. Uh, we don't want to make any toxic gases. Um, there's been, uh, yeah, I wonder if vinegar and- There's orange. a cheat sheet. It tells you what things you should mix together and what gases, like you can accidentally make chloroform. Oh, please. Like, that. like it's bad. Very pleased to see that the inside of the, the the tank is completely clean if you can see the stainless steel down there. 
So yeah, that's good. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. All right. Here we go. You want to? Uh, <laughs> I've had my bleach privileges revoked because the one time I accidentally forgot to put the cap on all the way and bleach leaked all over that and came out on the floor. So that's a quart in one a quart and a quarter, which is perfect for our sixty gallons. And we've used some of it, so it's probably less a little less than that. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go turn the water on. You okay. just hold, you can hold that and film at the same time. Yay. Ready? Yep. And we're off to the races. With my co, I'll get on a team meeting at 1.30 and be like, Hey, what'd you do? Oh, we just put my home in the water and we had to chalk our entire water system and... Oh, it's actually fun. It's fun. Perfect. Adventure. Keeps you grounded. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Look at that. Oh god. So we are going to uh, take all the aerators out. I forgot to do that. Hmm, you want it? <laughs> At least it didn't come out of my nose. Ew. Okay, so we have primed the system. We have this one going here. And I'm switching them back and forth from hot and cold. And I ran the shower and did the sump and drained it as well. The system is holding pressure, so that's good. I just hope these lines all clear themselves. Of course, with that black gunk we got out, I think everything will be okay, especially once the bleach sits in here for about six hours and then we'll run the whole thing out and then start flushing and flushing and flushing with fresh water. Good morning. We slept so well last night, would you say, sweetie? Yeah. Yeah. It was so nice to be floating again. And so we, oops. We are in phase two of, of our water. We are in phase two of our water line. Hmm. <laughs> it's early. We are in phase two of our water line purification process. That's a that's what we're calling it, water line purification process. I just shot the water system. Water line purification process. Shocking right? the water system with leaks. It's not. We're not purifying anything. We're just getting the foam out of our line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we flushed the water tank a couple times, and now we are going to reinstall. This is our drinking water filter. Um, this is like a different version of the Seagull filters, if anyone's familiar with those for like RVs or um, boats. Um, anyway, so I didn't want all the chlorine to be collected in the carbon in here because that's what these things are really good at doing. Carbon filters are good at taking chlorine out of the water. So um, I left this out and now I'm going to put it back in and this is the housing here and I'm just doing it in this bucket, in a collapsible bucket in here, because this whole thing is full of water right now. So, and that's, uh, that's it. That's the big baloney. That's the big baloney. That's the big baloney. <laughs> oh, you're just using it as a mirror. All right. Oh, yeah. wow.
And that's why we use the bucket. Oh, tell the camera that. And that's why we use the bucket. So we just stare into your eyes. Hot. Oh, I almost choked. So just like a bowl. So rice and veggies, asparagus, onion, garlic, and shiitake mushrooms. And then I'm trying to decide what I want to put on top. Do I want to put beans or do I want to put some eggs? Okay, there's rice in the bottom. Go ahead. What do we have? Like white sushi, sushi rice. Um, sauteed asparagus, shiitake mushrooms, and onions and garlic. And then just like some scrambled eggs, kimchi, spicy mayo, and like a nutritional yeast kind of thing. And I made sure the mayo was extra spicy because Parker, you always say I don't make it spicy. No. All right, first meal aboard. Wow, I look like a crazy scientist or something like that. You were kind of like crazy scientist. Yeah. I got all the halyards in today, in like an hour. It's totally worth it to take them out of there. All right, make your bowl so we can eat. All right. Good night.